Howdy everybody in YouTube land. I think it's time for another retro computer video in the sea of many retro computer videos and channels out there on YouTube. Anyways, this one is a PowerBook something another. Let's see. I picked this guy up off of Discord a while back. I've just never done a video on it. And Ooh, I don't like that cracking. Oh, yeah, I don't think I want to open that right now. Oh boy, I'll have to figure that out later. Um, I, who knows where it came from, but I picked it up from somebody on YouTube, or not YouTube, Discord. And it is a 145 past. So, not much to say about it other than it appears to be 100% complete with nothing broken. The door is still on there. Some serial number thing uh yeah i don't see anything of any significance except a little bit of rust there which that's not good also i've already performed the liberty of removing the battery because the original battery was starting to bloat and cause a problem so i just kept the door to hide that hole I don't see anything out of the ordinary. Okay, so I think at this point we should take it apart because we obviously have an issue with the hinges. And they get tight over time because the grease dries out and things like that. And they get so tight that when you go to open it, you'll just go snap, snap, snap and break all the plastic. So these machines were already notorious for that anyways, but... I don't listen to that. Yeah, I don't like that sound. That is the sound of plastic going, I'm going to snap on you. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, good. I don't like that. Yeah, I really don't like that. I want to see the condition of the LCD, though. I'm very scared to lift it up because that the hinges are a lot tighter than they should be. And this one probably needs all the standard stuff that they all do, like, you know, capacitors in the screen and everything else. So, let's see. Do we have any damage in the panel? It doesn't look like it. Everything looks intact. Okie dokie then the screen looks okay the the bezel and all that stuff look fine the keyboard looks fine it could use a little bit of a cleaning but that's that's okay so I think oh I do not like that sound yeah I'm gonna have to clean the hinges up for sure I do think though we should start taking it apart so we can determine what we need to do to restore this, which is should be straightforward. I want to see if the hard drive works, but before I can do that, we know we have to, to take care of the screen. So where to start? Well, let's take it apart and see what RAM upgrades and what hard drive we have in here. All right, so I was able to get all the screws out and separate the top half from the bottom half and pop this connector out. Now, remember how I said this was rusty? Well, I pulled that out and look at this. This definitely falls in the category of Omega Oof. So, that... Oof. Wow, it's bad. So, yeah, um, pretty bog standard. There's a little bit of a RAM upgrade in there with a quantum hard drive, which I know that's probably bad because there's rubber in there that sticks. Um, yeah, that's this thing looks looks like it was gonna it was in a flood. So this might be a parts machine. Oh man, that's bad. 
All right, well, let's get it the rest of the way apart. I, I have two or three more of these that are in shambles anyways because the screens were cracked or other nonsense. So I might be able to make one good one out of two or three. So I'll take a look at that. But before I do, I want to get this apart and see how bad the damage actually is. All right, well, I only had to take one screw out here because all of the other ones crumbled away, which is very common on these. these this was happening as far back as the late 90s. Um, it's just a bad plastic composition. They can be glued back in, but I'm not worried about that right now. But perhaps more importantly, this is basically a parts machine because look at the extent of the damage. That floppy drive is toast. Good news is I have spare parts, so I could get this thing working again if I so choose. But that, that is a lost cause. Uh, I may have been in a flood I don't know um perhaps more importantly I need to see the condition of the LCD because I have other power books I can use for parts that have cracked LCDs or whatever else going on um and the cool thing is is this hard drive's got some kind of a shim which is neat anyway so that guy is toast Probably. The drive itself might be alright, but the problem that these have is there's rubber in there that disintegrates. So, I can probably fix this drive, but I need to have the parts to do that with. Which, this might be what gets me into 3D printing. Because, sure, I can put a blue SCSI in here. and I, I have one. So, I can put a blue SCSI in there and go along my merry way. But, that's no fun. What's more fun is fixing the original drive. And I can I can get the tools to remove a multiple platter drive. And if I this is, might be what gets me into 3D printing because then I can get some PLA filament and 3D print the rubber stoppers that goes in these drives and just make a new you know rubber thing and put the drive back together and it'll be good to go. But yeah, there is this this thing is a mess, man. Wow, it's bad. Omega oof. Alright, well. Let's get the motherboard out. I want to see how bad the motherboard is. Unfortunately, there's no saving this one. Besides the obvious with the floppy drive is just too far gone, but... This standoff, all the plastic standoffs all broke off, which is common. I can glue those in, but this one is rusted in place. And of course, that would be the one where it's going through the shield. So it's not, it's not coming out. This thing is, there's this, there's no fixing this one. So I have to go through my parts bin um, and see if I have the proper parts to put something together because at least this base, I have all of the pieces so I can glue them all back down. But my other parts machines, I don't know if I still have all the plasticky bits to where I can use my solvent over there and glue them all back down. I don't know if I have that. So I have to go and check and see. But in the interim, this is junk. I can't do anything with that. But I do have the top assembly with the screen. Which is good because I have one with a broken screen that I can just do some rigging around and try to make something work in that case. But that's all parts at this point. And through the magic of video editing, we removed all of the rust. Everything's perfect now. No, not really. Um, I just had another 145 that is that I probably bought, I want to say 12 years ago or so but it was pretty damaged and the screen was cracked but at least I had the machine so I don't remember if the motherboard was any good or not that may have been an issue I don't remember but that doesn't matter because I saved the old board up there so worse comes to worse all we, all we have to do is just move some parts over but I need to fix these standoffs and they're not in that they, these aren't as bad as condition as the other ones were so I want to re-glue or you know put some 
solvent on these and let them reseat. And that's what we're going to do for that. And we're going to fix those two, which I have the original cover. There's a chunk of it still there for this one, but that one's missing. So I'm going to need to make up some kind of a slurry or something to, to fill that in or epoxy. I was able to take the screen apart and luckily it went pretty easily without any fanfare. So the standoffs on the display and hinge area is not cracked. But what I did do is take some of this cement and I softened it up a little bit. So it would try to mend any cracks that might be forming. And I reinforced the hinge area with the epoxy. So that hopefully will help with the torsion stress. Also, I need to re-lubricate and re-grease these hinges because they are extremely stiff. And I think that's what breaks a lot of these. But perhaps more importantly, we need to get to that LCD display because it's pretty rough with the capacitors. So let's work on that. So I got the screen out now. Um, it's really easy. Once you have the screen, you just take the screw out of this and you bend all these tabs out and the whole metal plate comes off. And then you can just carefully remove this screen, which I'm going to have to clean it anyways. But um, So what we need to do is we need to start recapping this because all of these PowerBook 145, 140, 170, all of them need... Or, you know, new caps in the display. So, I don't have the exact ones on hand. I got some I can probably mix and match. So, we have 3.3s at 35s. We have a 22 at 35. And then we have 100 at 6, which I have those. So, we're going to go ahead and get this guy recapped using my microfiber cloth to clean off the back side and I'm using my can of compressed air to um, clean off as much as the debris as I possibly can on the back side because I don't want debris trapped in the backlight. Um, and now I'm ready to put the cover on and then we'll clean the top of the screen. Display has been reassembled and it's clean as can be. Not perfect, but as long as there's no debris trapped in the backlight, I'm cool. All right, so now I can set this guy aside and we can work on the next thing, which is this right here. So this thing is absolutely filthy. First off, we want to make sure the cable's not torn and it doesn't look like it is. I think we're okay there. Um, yeah, and it's kind of sticky too because it's got two-sided tape in various spots. But the cable looks okay, but this... We've got some rust in here from water damage and all that fun stuff. So we got to take this guy apart and we need to clean all of this out. It's nasty. I want to scrub it and I want to um, see if there's any caps in there that need replaced and all that fun stuff. So let's get this thing torn apart. So I'm taking all the screws out and I pull the inverter out and it's nasty. So I got to look at my stash and see if I have another one, but... Perhaps more importantly, there is a capacitor we have to change on that. That purple one is a polymer cap. Those are hit or miss, but that green one definitely has to go. But that is crusty. So, we got to take care of that. Um, but I want to get this board out. I'm going to take this battery out. I'm not putting another one back in. Because I'm not going to use this machine enough to justify buying a battery and putting it in there just for it to leak later. So I'm going to pull that out. It is not going back in. And to no one's surprise, that top cover is nasty from when it was probably sitting underwater. So, all right, um, let's get these hinges out. Let's clean them up and work them a bit. And then I think... We can grab some of my solvent and, you know, reinforce all of those standoffs to make sure they're not going to break and clean it up. I was able to get all the covers off and the remainder of the screws plus get that cable out. And sure enough, look at that. This is going to be a lead pipe cinch. 
So this is why it's so stiff. I got that hinge removed, but that screw is rusted solid all the way through and it will not come out. And it's rusted all the way up inside the hinge. That's why it's stiff and won't move. So I'm gonna have to go through my junk bin and find a new top cover because that's, that's not gonna work. We're pretty much screwed at that point. I only have one other top cover and unfortunately it's smashed to bits. So that's not gonna work. I can't do anything with that. But the hinges and stuff are relatively intact. So what I can do is I can pull this hinge and because I have a spare keyboard and just in case I need it, I'll compare the two keyboards and replace to get the best one out of the two. And that came relatively local. So I have that. Um, my thought process here is I can grind that out, drill it out or something. Then I can probably see if I grind that out, I can take my soldering iron, heat that up and I can push that out from the other end. Do the same thing over here. Cause these are just inserts. So I can push that out and then push the new one in. So yeah, let's do that. That's going to be painful, but that's the only, that's the only solution I have. So let's drill that out, get rid of this. This is trash. And then push that out from the bottom side because it comes in from back here where it's pressed in just like you see there. So if I, if I push that out from the top side, I can push a new one in and then use my cement to try to, you know, glue all that back in, but we'll see. That's the only, only thing that I have on the top of my head that I can do here and just reuse this top cover. All right. So I got the head drilled out of there now. Um, so this, yeah, garbage. So we're gonna throw that away and then I'm gonna try to see if I can't. Oh man, this is probably a terrible idea. But it's the only idea I got. So we're gonna heat that up. Try to push that out of there. And just like that. I was able to push it out and there it is. Whoo, that sucker's still hot. Yep. Just put a little soldering, put a little solder on my tip and then just push that guy out. So now I can put the other guy in. I'll just take the one out of here and just put that in there. All right. I got the insert or the nut cert, what they call those pushed out of the hole with the soldering iron burning my finger in the process because why not so that's out i got all the other bits stripped off that don't need to be in here because this is what happened to it it's pretty much garbage so that can get disposed of so that's now parts i got the other one i cleaned the other one up it's i'm waiting for it to dry uh, so i did pull the inverter off now the inverter, this one's in much better shape. So I'm inclined to spray these out with some uh, fader lube, replace this one cap and just use this one and get rid of that one. So probably gonna do that. And now I have the new nut cert installed and literally all I did was just soften the plastic a little bit with my plastic weld and push it in there. I had to do it two or three times and now it's, it's in there. So let's flip it over and take a look on the other side and yep, she is installed. So there's a little bit of plastic in the way. That's not a big deal. I can literally just clean up some of that crap while it's still soft. Next thing to do is to grab a screw and make sure it threads in the hole and it does. And sure enough, 
I want to run that screw all the way through so I can literally pull it in. And once that nut circuit gets pulled in, we'll let it cure. And with that, the hinge has been successfully repaired. I relubricated the springs so they move a little bit easier now. And that um, standoff is in there. Kind of ugly looking, but it's in there. It's not going anywhere. Plastic re-glued itself because you can kind of see where it's split there, sort of. A big crack right there, so it re-glued itself. So we're good. Now we can start slowly putting this guy back together, bit by bit. We got the screen recapped. I got to put a cap into this inverter board. And we're going to start putting this thing back together. Oh, and I got to remove the battery. I put in a solid cap because I do not have a low profile 47 microfarad. So I'm just going to say hell with it. And that's a polymer cap, which we should be okay with. So we'll see how that works. And if it works okay, I'm going to leave it. I've already removed the battery out of the board. So that is not in there anymore. Could I replace it? Yeah but I'm not gonna use this thing often enough to where it matters, so off it went. Now we gotta get the cables fished back up through here and get the screen cover on so I can get the rest of these parts on. Got the board all mounted in and I got the cable snaked through. That one, I don't remember which way it goes, if it goes over the top or the bottom, I'll have to figure that out later, but that's in there now. I have that one that wraps in the front, I'm pretty sure. Goes in just like that. Got the two screws in there, keyboards in place. So we are getting into a situation where we're gonna start putting the rest of this back together. So hopefully we'll get that done. I gotta clean this cover off a little bit, it's kinda nasty. I got the screen situation figured out. So the cable for the ribbon runs around the front, but the inverter cable runs behind on this one because I tried to run it around the front but it's not going to work but there's a channel where it snakes through so in case anyone forgets where it goes that's how that's set up and actually I want to clarify that the wires come out the side here it goes behind the rod but comes out the side and not where the this part here is because it'll just pinch together if you do it that way all right, now that everything is anchored in place, I got the cable plugged in for that. Battery's been removed, all that stuff's been plugged back in. Uh, at this point, it's time to take a look at this mouse. and I wanna get it apart and clean the rollers and all that fun stuff before we put it back in there. So that's the next thing we wanna do. I couldn't get the ring off for the mouse ball to get the mouse ball at, so I took the, the circuit board off and got the ball out that way. I cleaned the mouse ball and the rollers and all of that stuff. So this has all been cleaned up and put back in here. There is a capacitor on this board, but it didn't show any signs of leakage. So I left it alone and it was some oddball value anyway that I don't have right now. So I'll get to it later, but for now I'm just going to leave it be just like the battery here. Uh, so now I think we're ready to put this guy together. We got to do the bottom side now. So Actually, before I get too carried away, I want to clean this top cover because it's she's looking a bit gross. So let me do that real quick. So I got it cleaned off pretty good. It's not 100% perfect, but yeah, it's looking much better now. That, that is nasty. So throw that in the trash can. Um, anyways, so it appears that everything is looking pretty good. It's holding pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and get the bottom cover reassembled. Hinges are working much better. It's not being hung up like it was before. So yeah, let's get the bottom put back together and we'll start getting this guy reassembled, I think. So what I've done with the bottom cover is these two nut certs and standoffs were missing. Well, I had one of them, but it was different. So what I ended up doing was I... Um, I don't think it's cured all the way. It's close enough though. So what I ended up doing was I took bits and pieces of the old plastic from the other case that I got rid of. That was all rusted up and I kind of fit them in there and I actually took the MEK cement 
and glued them in place. Once the glue had hardened, I reinforced all the missing pieces with this epoxy. So it's not going anywhere. Same thing here. And all these two do is just hold the floppy drive down anyways. It's not going anywhere. It's all good. All the other standoffs, I took a little bit of that. I didn't see any cracking, but I took a little bit of that glue and I just poured it around and softened all the standoffs. So that way they would melt. And then if there was any micro cracks in there, they would refuse. So we should be good on the bottom cover. The back of the bottom cover is... It's in good condition, so at this point, let's start putting it together. But what I want to do, though, is as I'm putting this together, I'm curious if the original hard drive is still good. <laughs> I doubt that it is, because, uh, yeah, we have that, but also we have, there it is, green crusties right there. So I don't think this drive's any good, but let's entertain the thought and try it anyways. I don't think it's going to work, but what we do have is a blue SCSI. This is an early run, so I got to get an SD card set up for this guy, and then we're going to put that in there and set that up for this machine. Yeah, we're going to have to install an OS, I think, but that's not a big deal. We have the drive, the good drive, and then, yeah, let's try it out, but... I do want to try this and see if it works, just out of sheer amusement, because, yeah, this drives junk. But it does have that little shim, which is I've never seen before, because this is not a full-height drive. So the non-full-height drives installed by Apple, they put the shim in, from what I understood. Uh, yeah, so start getting the stuff put back together. Um... I think what I want to do is see that goes in here, but also what I want to do is this motherboard because I had a 145 or a 140. I think this was a 140. The 14 no, it might have been 145. I don't remember, but this one's a 145B. I'm not sure what the difference is, but. I want to use the 145B motherboard and CPU card, which is in here somewhere. And I want to put that in here because what that will allow me to do is to make it a little bit better model because I put the bezel on the screen that says 145B versus the original 145. So we'll just make this a 145B machine. I'm not sure what the difference is, but that's, that's the way we're going to do it. I still have the original board over here, and unfortunately that has the standoff rusted into it and green crusties on the board. So that's going to be a parts board, but we'll get that board in here because I know that board works. Time to see if this hard drive goes down in a blaze of glory. Uh, okay, so we need to turn that on. Adjust that to where around 7.5 volts. I need you... I'm literally doing this live without any editing. Well, during this clip anyway. So, plug that in. Pretty sure that's, wait a minute. Hmm. Before I do something stupid, let's see. Let's see if that's, which one's negative here. Okay, the outer shell, negative. Okay. Okay, that's negative. The front one facing me. Negative. Positive. Alright, does it work? That is a negative. No power. I may not like the fact that I don't have the top cover plugged in. Although that shouldn't matter with this. Well, there it goes. I was hitting the wrong button. Will this drive run? 
Oh, that thing sounds awful. That thing sounds awful. You know what? I think it's starting up. No, maybe not. How about we get the lid on it and check for sure? Well, here goes nothing. We got sound. Oh, I think the screen's bad though. Oh, that sucks. We have a bad screen or a cable. Maybe I tore the cable. Anything certainly possible. Well then, that is most definitely a problem. Well, further troubleshooting is required. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Turns out the CPU card's bad, so I swapped the CPU card from the other one, and now it works. The CPU card that came out of the rusty one is the one that's in there now, the 145 card and not the 145B card. So my 145B card is no good. Ah, eh, not surprising. So something's definitely went bad on that one. But at least I got it working now. So, but the hard drive is definitely junk. No surprises, but hey, it was worth the entertainment value, wasn't it? So yeah, um, I think we can finally move forward. Let's take the hard drive apart for ha-has, because why not? I'm curious how bad it is on the inside. That is not good. Very not good. Yeah, that's a, uh, look at that, that is definitely gone. So, just for grins and shiggles, let's take the rest of it apart, it's junk anyways. I took the drive platter out, and you can see why these things are so difficult to fix, because there's one of those rubber bumpers right there at the bottom. So, that one, and then there's one over here on this magnet for the other direction, so that yeah that has to be replaced but in order to do that you have to take the platter off now this is a single platter drive so you could do that if you were wearing gloves and stuff and then don't let these heads smash into each other unlike i did but this drives junk anyways and uh what i've noticed on the bottom side it's clean but you can see the ring right in the 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 end zone there like right there where the head had crashed into the platter so it's garbage. And you can really see it through here. This thing died long before this machine was left in a flood. So, anyways. Alright, well, I'm going to scrap the drive. It's pretty much junk. Uh, and we're going to move on to the blue scuzzy. Alright, let's try this again. I got the screws back in here for this CPU card. So now I'm going to put the RAM in and hope this RAM is good and it's not causing my problem because that would suck. Um, the next thing to do is put, we have to put the floppy drive back in place, but we also, I want to put the blue SCSI in place. I've got an, I got an SD card here with two images on it. I have the Apple legacy CD and I have a base 
blank 1700 megabyte or whatever image so we'll see what we can do and if it'll boot and do its thing so let's finish getting this thing put back together and then toy around with that got the floppy drive and blue scuzzy mounted in so we're going to get all of that put back together get this carefully maneuvered back into place well, I have this anchored down. I have all the screws in place, including the standoffs that I repaired. Everything's holding up and stable. Blue Scuzzy's in place. And we are gonna temporarily set the display on and we're gonna see what happens. Let's hope it works. All right, well, here we go. It's just temporarily just kind of sitting on there for now. Turn our power supply on. And then, hey, the display looks better, still. Oh, let's hopefully we get a blue scuzzy. Maybe. Blue Scuzzy does not work. All right, well, I don't know why it doesn't work, but it does not work. Hmm. Maybe I didn't do the images right, or maybe the firmware on this Blue Scuzzy is too old. But we gotta do some further investigating. We'll have to grab a boot disc and see what we can do with that. Well, now that's interesting. It started up finally. As soon as I, as soon as I um, put this floppy disk in there, which is a System 6 disk, it spit it right back out, and then it started booting from the Blue Scuzzy. That's weird. Huh. That's really weird. Uh, SCSI ID 6, yeah. But one thing I've noticed, though, is... Um, it's not seeing the SCSI drive. Let's see. It's not seeing SCSI ID 0. Yeah, it's not. That's weird. Okay. Wow, this thing's fast. Blue Scuzzy's really fast. I've never used one before. Let's see, internal HDSC setup. Nope, does not see anything. That's interesting. Keyboard doesn't work. And come on. So my rollerball's not working very good either, even though I cleaned it. So let's see, dry setup. There it is, one zero. Initialize. Initialization options. Nah, we don't need to do any of that. See, that, yeah, I gotta fix that. Initialize. Alright. Okay, it responded to the keyboard that time. Let's see. Macintosh HD. Yeah, we're good. All right, yeah, so it's working now. That is weird why Blue Scuzzy acted like that. What the hell happened down here? Interesting. Anyways. Ow. Oh. Apple System Profiler. 
Nope, doesn't work on anything that's 68K. I'm starting to notice that. It moves side to side, no problem. But up and down, it's really being picky. Yeah, I don't know why that is. All right, well, let's get OS installed and all that fun stuff. And I think I'm going to... Um, yeah, I think I'm going to get this thing going. And get it all done. Which I'm not going to get all that on video because, you know, there's many videos out there doing that. But let's let's get this soft system software installed. Trying to get the blue SCSI to work properly has been an adventure. But uh, slowly but surely the operating system is being installed. I installed System 7 from one image to another. And it went really fast. But now I'm trying to install System 7.5 and it's taking forever. So... Yeah, the, the mouse is a little touchy still. I think the sapphire rollers are probably bad. I'm not sure. i got to get in there and do a better inspection and see. But it's just a waiting game. Alright, she's all back together now. I kept the slot cover from the old battery. The old battery was bulging and leaking, so that went bye-bye. But I did keep the slot cover. Um... No problem with the plastics. Everything's all good. I got my power supply rig in there and I'll do that next. I even got the rear door. So, everything's good. System 7.5 is installed, which might be a little heavy for this thing because there's only 4 megabytes of physical memory, but seems to work fine. I got some virtual memory loaded here. So, yeah. Um, I think that's going to do it. Uh, let's see. I got, you know, I got the basic stuff you know powerbook 145 backup i'm not even sure what that does i never run it got this copy installed just you know basic run-of-the-mill stuff so the only thing i don't have in here like i said before is the pram battery i don't have that in there um but that doesn't matter for what we're doing so yeah i think uh i think we're gonna call it here because everything's everything's good. I don't want the system to go to sleep. I don't want the hard drive spinning down because I think there's a bug with the blue SCSI. If if it spins down, it'll crash it or something. I don't know. I don't want to take any chances, so I have it disabled. But I got the screen dimming set, so if I leave it open, it'll do all that. But anyways, I think this is going to conclude the video. And... Thank you for watching. If you have a comment, please feel free to leave one. And until next time, guys.